So at around noon, uh, Quinn Koske and myself arrived at Logan International Airport in Boston, where we met up with Brandon. Once we arrived at the Airbnb, uh, we quickly dropped our stuff off, and Alec, Quinn, and myself drove to the local supermarkets where we grabbed food for the rest of the week. This is the haul. What do we think this is all gonna cost us? We got meat in here, we got milk, we got eggs, we got a whole bunch of bread and all this stuff. How much? I'm gonna go 350. 350 USD? USD, yeah. I'll go, I'll, I'll go four. Yeah, I'll go four. Go um, four. Since it's my bank account, I'm gonna go 300. <laughs> I quickly uh, threw on some clothes and my shoes uh, and went out the door uh, with Sadie. Uh, and we had a good time getting to know each other in that run uh, and eventually came home to uh, a pasta dinner cooked by the rest of the team, uh, which was delicious. January 29th was our first full day in Boston and as well my first time on the New Balance track. I was quite amazed uh, by the facility. The track was beautiful uh, and I just felt very privileged to uh, be able to have this opportunity uh, to train at this facility for the week. Um, now for my track workouts, uh, it didn't go so well uh, as I had a very long travel day the day before, um, but I'm happy that I persevered uh, and got the workout done. So after finishing the workout, uh, we made our way back to the Airbnb, uh, had a quick lunch, and shortly after started our in daily interviews with Koske. Uh, a few hours later, uh, started prepping dinner. Uh, we made a chicken stir fry, obviously veggie for myself. Ended out turning really great. Uh, shout out to Tori for um, planning that meal. Um, but yeah, had dinner, uh, had some really good laughs around the table uh, before heading out to the Celtics game. The Celtics game uh, was a very exciting game and I'm really glad that I uh, opted in for the opportunity. Celtics trailed the Pelicans for majority of the game, but later on the Celtics uh, pulled ahead where they ended up winning the game. And yeah, just uh, kind of concluded a really good uh, first day in Boston. Uh, had a quick bite for breakfast before making our way with the team to the New Balance track. Both Alec and I had longer runs planned for the day, uh, so we decided to uh, run outdoors where we did two loops uh, of a pond called Fresh Pond. Um, one of the loops being four kilometers, so we did that twice uh, before making our way back to the New Balance track um, and did about uh, 17 kilometers uh, for myself. Uh, and I think Alec went a little bit longer. Uh, from there, we regrouped uh, with the team at the track. So arriving back at the Airbnb, uh, we quickly made lunch. I'm pretty sure most of us made sandwiches on this day. Uh, and from there, we made our way to Harvard University, where we got to tour the campus, uh, see a lot of cool facilities. Um, I think the most memorable part for me uh, was being able to see the uh, running team, where we got to spot a lot of big names, uh, including Graham Blanks in a workout. So that was really cool. One of the highlights of the trip for me was uh, making dinners with the team. Uh, and in this particular night, um, all hands were on deck uh, for the taco bowls. Uh, we had people uh, cooking rice, people chopping veggies, people cooking the meats, uh, and just had a really good time around the table uh, sharing laughs uh, with the team. January 31st was a pretty chill day. I had a 30-minute easy run, which I did outside. Uh, came back to the Airbnb where we didn't have very much planned for the day, uh, so I ended up reading my book um, and just getting some extra rest. Um, the highlight of this day uh, was celebrating Koske's birthday, uh, where we bought him a pie uh, and got some ice cream. Uh, enjoyed that. Uh, and then we watched uh, Deadpool to finish off the rest of the night. February 1st uh, was my final race prep uh, for the Scarlet and White Invitational uh, on Saturday. Uh, so my race prep was 5 times 300 meters, 
uh, which went really, really well, a lot better than Monday's workouts, uh, and then finished up with some strides on the track. Um, in the afternoon, we did we went to uh, the historical part of uh, Boston, where we did the Freedom Walk, got to see uh, the Paul Revere House, uh, walked through Little Italy, uh, and then as well went through the Quincy Market, uh, where I got to try some Boston chowder, which was delicious. That's not how it looks like it's pronounced. Chowda. Uh, and then coming back to the Airbnb, um, we made our dinner uh, and finished up the night playing Mexican uh, train dominoes, which was a lot of fun. February 2nd was a very busy day. It started at the New Balance flagship store where we met up with uh, the New Balance team, Black Tar Running, and Canadian Running Magazine. Uh, from there, we walked across to the New Balance uh, track uh, where we were fortunate to get a tour of the New Balance Research uh, Lab and also get a presentation on some of um, the production of their products. Um, two of the highlights for me uh, at the New Balance flagship store was uh, being able to see Nozomi uh, Tanaka, which is a she is a long distance uh, runner from Japan. Uh, we got to see her trial on uh, some of the new uh, New Balance shoes and uh, how uh, these shoes would affect her body. Um, and the second highlight for me was being able to see the environment chamber uh, where, they're, where they are able to uh, mimic different altitudes, uh, different wind patterns, alter the temperature. Um, and really allow athletes um, to train in the, in the environment that uh, they're competing in. Uh, we were able to get onto the track one last time uh, for the week uh, where I was able to do a little shakeout run uh, as well as get to see some of the setup uh, for the Grand Prix over the weekend uh, and also see a few other um, professional athletes on the track, uh, including uh, the 3,000 meter uh, record holder, so that was really cool. Um, and in the evening, uh, we met up with Dave for dinner at uh, Joe's, and then finally um, checking into our hotel where we would stay for the rest of the week. February 3rd was the Scarlet and White meet, where I would later compete at the 3,000 meters uh, at Boston University. Uh, my race was scheduled uh, later in the day at uh, 6 p.m., so I had uh, a few hours to kill. Uh, in the morning, I was able to watch the U.S. Olympic trials uh, with the New Balance team, got to watch uh, M. Sisson compete, um, who later uh, finished second overall and was uh, and qualified for the Olympics. Uh, and I also got to interview CPT uh, for the Canadian Track and Field League, where I got to ask him a few questions um, and also wish him good luck for the Grand Prix on the weekend. Do you have any advice for up and coming Canadian athletes trying to follow in your footsteps? I do have lots of advice. Uh, I'll just say that sometimes with setbacks, either they're like, injuries or anything like that you kind of feel like your world's crumbling around you and you know and you're, you're just asking yourself like what is my worth am i gonna ever come back am i ever gonna be stronger and and uh you know i'm still here like i i barely competed and barely trained for a few years because of injuries and you know i found my way back at the at the highest level and uh i just think that uh if you believe in yourself and you're surrounded with people who love you and believe in you as well, um, you can make it out of any struggle or any, uh, any setback that gets thrown at you. After watching the U.S. Olympic trials, uh, Alex, uh, Quinn and I made our way to the Boston University track uh, where we got to watch a few of the CTFL athletes compete. Um, I was able to watch Tori and Josh run, uh, which was really cool. Um, and I still had quite a bit of time to kill before my race um, later on in the evening. So I uh, ended up watching a lot of track um, and racing this day. Um, 
one of the highlights in, in particular was uh, getting to watch uh, Reagan Yee win the uh, women's 3000 meter race, which is really cool. And uh, finally, um, after a few delays, I was able to compete um, in the 5000 meters on, on the track. Uh, this is my first 5,000 meters uh, indoors, uh, so I was a little bit nervous for it. Overall, I was really uh, happy with uh, the way I performed. Um, I had a bit of a slow start, but was able to make my way uh, through the rankings uh, throughout the race. Um, and just coming up shy on my 5,000 meter PB, uh, which uh, is 1439. Let's go, man. I'm happy with, really, really happy with this result, uh, you know, knowing that uh, it's still very early um, in the year. Um, this gives me uh, a lot of hope that uh, a big summer season is ahead of us. Good work. Uh, we're late for dinner right now. And we'll the, the girls, reason. yeah, the girls, <laughs> they found a puppy. We're, we're like literally late for dinner right now. Tori, Lauren. And we're walking. And we're, yeah, and we're going to Stephanie's on Newberry with uh, New Balance Canada, so. February 4th was the Grand Prix, uh, and as well, my final day in Boston. Um, the day started uh, first at the New Balance headquarters, uh, where we got to tour around the facility and as well learn about uh, the history of New Balance. After having lunch with the New Balance team, we made our way to the track, where I got to watch my first professional track meet, uh, the New Balance Grand Prix. Uh, at the meet, I got to see uh, many professional athletes, as well as watch many Canadians compete, uh, and my favorite uh, event of the day, uh, watching Marco Arop break the 1,000 meter uh, national record. Following the track meet, uh, we had the opportunity to go to uh, a bar called Broken Records, uh, adjacent to the New Balance track, where we uh, met up with the New Balance team again and also got to meet many New Balance athletes, uh, including Jake Whiteman, uh, where we spent some time uh, chatting with him, uh, playing some shuffleboard, um, and just celebrating uh, a great meet. <laughs> 